God bless you, Facebook and YouTube. How you doing? This is Apostle Robert Jenkins. It's a Tuesday morning. Uh, thank God it's 6 a.m. Central Standard Time, 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. God bless everybody. And welcome to Divine Insight Ministries. If this is your first time, we are out of New Orleans. And as always, me and my wife like to take out the time and say thank you. And God bless you for all that you do and how you support this ministry. So God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Uh, good to see everybody. Son, God bless you. God bless you, Carla. God bless you, Sister Sandy. God bless you, Brother Samuels. God bless you, Sister Rita Tate. Good morning. Go ahead, hit that share button. Share this on your page. The shares was kind of low yesterday uh, for our average. We've been averaging about 100 shares. So go ahead and please share this on your page. That's important that you share uh, the ministry that allows people to see it. It, it, it. it does a great deal of evangelism for us and also allows you to hit the replay when you share it on your page. So please share this video on your um, on your telephone, show this video, okay? Good to see you, Cindy Mo. God bless you, Sister Sparkle. God bless everybody. Uh, please, if you have not ordered your book yet, please do that. If you have not received your book yet, your t-shirts, your hats, and um, you have already paid your money, just let us know, okay? And we'll get that to you. We wanna make sure that everybody has what's due to you uh, before the New Year's coming in. God bless you. Cousin, Brother Michael Jones, hey man, how you doing? I was going to call you yesterday. I'll try to call you today. So God bless everybody. Mike Jackson, hey man, what's going on? God bless you. Sister Arnold, God bless you. God bless you. Brother Logan, thank you, man, for the encouragement yesterday. God bless you, Captain Forrest. So let's get ready to go into part five today, the ministry of the man and the message. Uh, a lot of things I want to share with you this morning. And, uh, we're moving into a mature place with God, and uh, God has given us a, a lot of revelation. And this is a mature word, so prepare yourself and have ears and eyes uh, for the level of teaching that God has given us, and we'll walk together. Good to see you, Pastor Harrison, man. Love you so much. God bless you, man. And uh, just thank God for you. So let's get ready to go. Father, we thank you for all the things you're doing in our lives. We thank you, Lord, for the stability that you're doing in our lives, allowing us to be stable and be mature, to grow, to not be tossed to and fro by every wind and doctrine. So we thank you, Lord, for that. Bless us today. Wisdom, we're listening. Holy Spirit, lead us and guide us to all truth. We assign angels to our mind, north, east, south, and west. God, we know that no one before the gifts us or prosper. We bless you this morning. We are in expectation for your word, for your daily bread. Feed us. Feed us until we grow and we can feed others. And we bless you, Lord. Have your way this morning, God. Oh, God, keep us if you can. Thank you, Lord, for your protection, angels, for your word that covers us. And thank you, Lord, that the word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. And we bless your name, God, for all that you're doing and all that is being done. And in your name, all things are complete. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So God bless you. God bless you. Still dealing with a little sinuses. It's getting so much better. But I'm not all the way uh, completely. Manifestation is not there. I know that I'm healed uh, by his stripes. But the manifestations are not all the way gone. Okay, so let's move into the ministry, the man, and the message. Good to see you, Brother Brian, later, man. I haven't, I haven't heard your voice, man. Got to call you and just talk to you. Uh, always encouraged when I hear you. Okay, so let's let's talk... Let's pick up from um, St. John chapter 16, and we're going to pick up at verse 13, okay? St. John chapter 16, and we're going to pick up at verse 13, okay? Uh, let me read some things to you. If you haven't watched the um, previous teaching, part one, part two, part three, part four, please go back and do that. I was able to load up uh, maybe two videos uh, yesterday. And uh, on YouTube, I'm going to try to have the rest of those on YouTube today. But let's go from St. John chapter 16, and let's pick up at verse 13, okay? So God bless everybody. Hit that share button, share this on your page, and God bless you. It says, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things, well, for us, things to come. I'll read it again. John chapter 16, verse 13. How be it 
when he, the spirit of truth, is come. He will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. He will show you things to come. Okay, so uh, let's talk from that verse first. And uh, I had a point one, but I'm going to put another point there first. And so point number one would be, you carry within you, we carry within ourselves, all baptized believers that are filled with the Holy Ghost. You carry in you the spirit of truth. Point number one, you carry the spirit of truth. All right, so I'm going to put that down. You carry within you the spirit of truth, okay? When you are honest with yourself and being authentic to who you really are in God, then there is no lie in you. When you are authentically being you and you have the Holy Ghost in you, you're filled with the Holy Spirit, that spirit that is one with you is the spirit of of truth. Now, this is a very powerful point because the place that God wants you to walk into will be able to identify error. And the reason why you can identify, good to see you, Sister Journey, good to see you, Apostle. I was able to listen to a couple minutes of your teaching yesterday, and um, I'll try to finish the rest of it. Good to see that you're back on and you're moving back into what God called you to do, man. So, love you for that. Okay, but point number one, we carry the spirit of truth in us, okay? Now, this is very key to move it into, into ministry, move it into the spirit of excellence because you carry the spirit of truth, which means when you're honest with yourself and when you are being authentically you, there is no lie in you. There's a place in God that the devil never wanted us to get to, that's first point. And second, he never wanted us to believe we were that we were there. He don't want you to walk in the fullness of who you are, the potential of who you are. Uh, it's a scary place because most time we've been told it's not attainable. Like we've been told we can't live perfect because we didn't understand the word perfection. We thought perfect means sinless. Okay. And, and so our viewpoints on a lot of things are distorted. And because we have a distorted viewpoint, we have a, a, a distorted approach, okay? Because we have a distorted viewpoint, we have a distorted approach. <clears throat> and so when it comes to perfection, God lets us know that if we submit and are under the fivefold ministry, it moves us into the perfecting of the saints, Okay, this is something that God always wanted us to move into was perfection as in as in mature because God sees perfection as mature. Okay. So and when he said, be ye perfect as I am perfect, he said, be mature to handle adversity. Real maturity is handling adversity without ever not being authentic. That's what real maturity is. Real perfection is when you're no longer tossed by to and fro. It's when you can stand in the midst of sorrow. It's when you can embrace your cross without losing your Christ or your crown. This is real perfection. And so most of us don't understand this level. And so God is saying to the apostles before the Holy Ghost, watch this, was given to him on the day of Pentecost. Okay. He says, I want you to know something that when the spirit of truth comes, okay, the spirit of truth, he's going to be in you and he doesn't speak of himself, but you will literally walk with the spirit of truth. Okay. This is so powerful because most time we have walked with so many lies, even in, even our bondages, even the bondages that I used to carry about my father uh, were lies because I didn't know how to lead on the spirit of truth. The spirit of truth shows you the truth about your journey. So you're no longer, you're no longer distraught when you go through. 
Uh, you can go through storms. You can go through persecution. You can go through adversity and remain honest to yourself, remain strong because, watch this, you understand the journey by the revelation that God has given you because of the spirit of truth. The spirit of truth will allow you not only to handle your problems uh, maturely, because a mature person handles immaturely, maturely. Woo! When you are mature, you handle immaturely from a, from a mature place. Okay? Very key. This is the spirit of truth. Not only the spirit of truth help you in that area, but the spirit of truth helps you in an area that when the devil tries to use people to destroy you, because you know the spirit of truth, you will not fight against flesh and blood. You will no longer take it personal. You no longer will allow the deception of the devil to work because you know God has a greater plan than what you are experiencing. And so the spirit of truth allows you to sleep in a storm. It allows you to be calm. It allows you to respond. Watch this. To, to, to proact and not react because the spirit of truth was always walking with you in the midst of the lies, the error, the deception, uh, 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 the false accusations. The truth is there. Not only the truth of what they're saying, but the truth about what God is doing uh, uh, with what's going on. Woo! Okay. Oh, my God. Okay. I know I had lost my box of tissue. Okay. So, that's very, very, very key. Okay? The spirit of truth. Point number one. He's with you. Okay? Now, point number two. Point number two is, this Holy Ghost is a greater level of truth being revealed Daily. Woo. Now, I want to take my time today because I want you to get this. Every day, there's a greater level of truth being revealed to you by the Holy Spirit that's in you. A greater level of truth. A greater level of truth concerning your destiny. A greater level of truth concerning your purpose. A greater level of truth concerning your identity. Because the spirit of truth is in you and he's always revealed to you a greater level of truth. Okay? Ooh, I am in love with what God has done in my life because the truth of every step I've ever taken, every experience I've ever been through, I know how to manage my experiences now by the spirit of truth. I know how to manage my experiences in my mind. Can you manage your experiences? How well are you managing your experiences in your mind? And when you are managing those experiences, in other words, how are you placing your experiences? How much weight do your experience has on you being positive or negative? And you have to know how to manage your experiences mentally. And the Holy Ghost is in you so that he can help you manage your experiences. The Holy Spirit is going to say that's not the truth. Your experiences may say to you, you are never making, you'll never graduate from high school, you'll never come out of college, you'll never get married, you'll never have kids, you'll never have ministry. It'll give you the never, never, never. But the spirit of truth will reveal to you the truth, even when you are in the pit, even when you're in the prison, it will reveal to you the truth. And so the spirit of truth is in you so that it can help you manage your experiences so you don't go through life bitter based upon what you have experienced. You don't go through life unforgiving me based upon what you've experienced because the spirit of truth is there to help you manage your experiences in your mind so that you cast down every thought and every imagination that exalt itself against the knowledge of God. That's not the truth. The truth is is that I am going to make it. I already make it. The truth is that I am healed. The truth is I am delivered. The truth is I am complete because the spirit of truth cannot lie. So when it gives me, it's it's, it's commentary, or oh, watch this, it gives me its comments, watch this, oh, in my experience, I do not agree with my feelings, I do not agree with my emotions, I agree with the Holy Ghost, which leads me into perfection, leads me into maturity, because the spirit of truth can't lie, and whatever he says about that situation is the truth, and that's how I manage my emotions. 
That's how I handle or, or what I, I, I normally may call this a enemy or call her an enemy or him an enemy or them an enemy. But the spirit of truth may show me something different than what I'm feeling. And I go along with the spirit of truth. It helps me manage my experiences. Because yeah, I got a greater level of truth being revealed. You see, and so for so long, I was in bondage to my perceptions, to my perceptions. It is a danger when you have the Holy Ghost, but you're allowing your own perceptions to become your truth. Your truth cannot come from your own perceptions. It must come from the Holy Ghost. It must come from the Holy Ghost. And so many times when God is moving you to a place, good to see you, Dad. Apostle Michael Scott, God bless you. Many times in your life, the Holy Spirit wants to move you to a greater level of truth, even concerning the previous perceptions that you had. God want to help you with that. They that worship God must worship God in spirit and in truth. There's a truth being revealed about everything you've ever experienced. And now the devil will not be able to hold you in captivity to your previous experiences or your previous perception because now you know the truth. It was not my dad trying to kill me or my mom trying to kill me. It was not this situation. It was not this. The spirit of truth showed me the journey. Watch this. Showed me how to view things I've been through. And that's why I don't hate the white man. I don't hate the black man. That's why, watch this. I don't go around with bitterness. I don't go around with envy. I don't go around with jealousy. I don't go around with offense on me because I have the spirit of truth that reveals the truth about my journey. I'm free from offense. I'm free from it because the spirit of truth, it reveals it deeper. And every day God is unfolding. Every day he's pulling back the layer of the onion. Every day he's revealing. In my father's house are many mansions. Mansions. You are the you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. The Father's house is you. He lives in you, and in you are many many watch this, many rooms, many layers to who you are, many understandings, and there's more truth. And where religion had me stuck, the spirit of truth showed me another layer. Or what, what traditions held me held down, the Holy Spirit came and showed me another level of truth. Where my experience had me in bondage, the Holy Spirit came and revealed another truth. Are you allowing the spirit of truth to reveal truth to you in everything you've ever experienced, saw, taste, touched? Now, God is saying, how did you hear me speak about what you went through? Whoa, because don't let, what, don't let your senses become your truth. Don't let what you see with your natural eyes become your truth. Don't let what you hear with your natural ears become your truth. Don't let what you taste, what you touch, don't let your senses become your truth. Allow your truth to come from the spirit of truth. Woo! Not the statement of truth. Most of us hear a statement of truth, but we have never listened to the spirit of truth. He's without error, without lies. He only says, he doesn't say anything based upon himself. Everything he says is what I told him to say. And this is the comfort that when we walk with God, we walk with the spirit of truth. And so we don't have to worry about anything that has come, will come, or shall come. Watch this, because the spirit of truth is now. He's in the now. He is. There is truth. I have the isness of God. I have the truth of God, the revelation of God that's been revealed. That's been revealed. Revealed in the isness. Faith is. And this Holy Spirit shall come. Watch this. But now is. And you have to know that everything that you need to know is already is. Everything you need to taste is already is. Already, everything you need to see is already is. It is in the spirit of truth. And so you're walking on something that you know, not something that you're learning. You're walking by something that you know. You're walking by something that's already been done. Because it is the isness of the spirit of truth. Now, how can it be truth if it has not been done? And so if it's already truth, that means it's been done. He can't be the spirit of truth of things that has not come. That means whatever need to come has already come. And he gives us the truth about what's to come. Which means you can't change it. You wait on it because you wait on the Holy Ghost. You wait for what you heard the spirit of truth say. And so I know the truth. So I can't die because the Holy Spirit are revealed to me. I must live. Uh-oh. See? And so it is from that spirit of truth that I can handle anything that may come upon this journey. 
Anything I may face upon this journey, because I know what's coming, because I walk with the spirit, the mindset of truth. Woo! Oh, my God. Okay? Are you getting it? So, point number one, we walk in the spirit of truth. Point number two, it is a greater level of truth being revealed daily in the isness. There's a place in God that doesn't move, even though time is always ticking. There's a is this place in God. There's a place in God, that spiritual place that we sit in heavenly places, even though I'm sitting in my studio now, we sit in heavenly places. There's a is this, you have to know the place you sit in, always know the truth about what you're about to encounter. All right, now watch this, real heavy. So that's St. John chapter 16, verse 13. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, is come, not will come, has come, but is come. So is he coming or is he is he here? Watch this. Here you go. He will, he will what? He will guide you into all truth. You are being guided in every experience that you are going through right now. Do not get frustrated. Do not be distracted. Watch this. That's right. Truth is in the present tense. God is already beyond time. Past and future are only constructive of the mind. Okay. Thank you, Dad. Very key. When we understand that, when we understand the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth, okay, in every area of your life, watch this. When he is come, he will guide you to all truth. Do not be frustrated. Do not be distracted by what you are experiencing. Why? Because it is only walking you to a greater level of truth. There are some things that held you bondage because of your perception. God is walking you out of every false perception. He's walking you out of every false perception. And so now you're walking with the Holy Ghost at a greater level. And now you're ready, watch this, you're ready to receive truth at a greater level. At a greater level. Now you're able to see truth and you won't abort because of what you see. You won't hate because of what you hear. You won't, you won't offend because of what you know. Now you're ready to handle the truth of reality. From a God perspective, and still remain divine. Woo! Hope you're getting this this morning. Watch this. Watch this. Okay? I wrote a book, my first book that I released, The Journey of False Perceptions. And God was confident well because it was the false perceptions that were, that were caging me in. My dad never loved me. Not true. My mother was this, not true. Life was this, not true. Nobody would ever see me, not true. And I had to walk into truth. Now, when you start walking by the spirit of truth, it's going to walk you more into unity. You're going to see out of the eyes of love. You're going to see everybody as your brother. Your language will change when you start walking in the spirit of truth. You'll begin to pray our father because you'll see God as the father of all. You will begin to see that all things work together for the good. You will understand the all. You will understand the all-inclusive plan. How God can use even the negative and the positive to bring about God. To bring us to a godly place. Not a positive place or a negative place, but a God place. You will start seeing out of the single eye. When your eye is single, it is full of light. When you begin to walk with the spirit of truth, it brings you into the light. It brings you into the singleness of who we are. That we are, that we all have one father and we all are sons and we all are brothers. It'll bring you into a unity of family because of the truth. The truth will bring that the inclusive plan that everything that you thought the devil was using to destroy you, God was allowing to build you. And so you'll start seeing it because you have the spirit of truth. Woo! Truth, 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 truth is not based upon a past or present, but is. It, it is it is conclusive. It is a elevated eye. Whenever you whenever you walk into the spirit of truth, you are seeing things from an elevated position. God, I feel the Holy Ghost. See, I, I can write a letter when I was 11 years old, and I can write a letter and say, I love you, uh, Lucy. When I'm 11, I write that letter. I love you, Lucy. Somebody can find that letter, and I'm married to my wife, Cassandra. And they can say, look here, Cassandra, your husband don't love you. He's in love with Lucy. I got the proof. 
I got a letter right here. See, it says, see this Robert Jenkins, that's his name up there. He says, I love you, Lucy. And even though the letter says, I love you, Lucy, it is not the truth. That is what I wrote when I was 11 years old. See what I'm saying? So even though it has been documented, it is no longer the truth because it is in the past of what I wrote. And so there's a lot of things that, watch this, you are still believing because you are still tied to the past. Now, I'm going to walk heavy today. I told you these lessons are getting heavier. When you walk with truth, you don't walk in what was. You don't walk in what, what shall be. You walk in based upon what is. Okay? Watch this. Okay? You walk in what is, and what is, watch this, what is includes what was and what shall be, but it's always what is. Faith is. Faith is. And so when you walk into that level of truth, and that level of truth suspends, watch this, it suspends the laws of the past. It suspends the anxiety of the future, and it places you in the peace of the now. Watch this, I'll say it again. When truth, it suspends the law of the past. It removes the anxiety of the future. Be anxious for nothing. But it places you in the peace of the present. Truth does. And so when you walk in truth, you will have peace that passes all understanding because it suspends the laws of the past. Everything in the past has a law. I don't walk by the law, I walk by God's grace. I walk by the spirit of God, the spiritual law. Watch this. It also, I, I'm not anxious for nothing. I'm not, I can't, it, it's not, I, I'm not, I'm not pulled into the future as I, I, as I regret what I'm going through. It allows me to have peace in my presence. It allows me to have peace, peace in my right now. No matter what they did say or what they will say, I'm living on what he is saying right now. The is this. There is this. It is a it is a time signature that is not on the clock, but it's there. It is, it is a place in the spirit. It is a place where you can literally be asleep in a boat that's full of water and not be drowned by the water. Even though the boat is full, there's a place in God that that Sabbath day, that day of rest. It is in that. Day. It is in that moment. It's in that day. And that day is every day. Give us this day, our daily bread. It is in that day, in that bread. And that bread is the word. Man, man should I live by bread alone? By, by every word that proceed out of the mouth of God. It is that proceeding word that I live in. It is that truth. It is that bread. Woo. It is that reality of oneness, unity, allness. And the Spirit of God lives in me. I never have to live outside of my peace. I never have to live outside of that place. In Him I live and move and have my being is in that place. I was in the I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. What day is that? Is that Monday? Is that Tuesday? Is that Wednesday? Is that Thursday? Is that Friday? Is that Saturday? Is that Sunday? It's the Lord's day. It's a place labor to enter into this rest. Woo! See. And that spirit of truth lives within you so that whatever you're dealing with in reality, you deal with it from a place that you have suspended the laws of the past, which will all captivities come from the law of the past. All bondages come from the law of the past. It also removes me from the anxiety of, of, of the morrow. That I can't wait for the morrow for this to change. I can't wait for another year. I don't need to wait for something to change. I know what is now. I know the truth about what is. I, the truth is in the isness. So even when it has not come, it has come because I know the truth about what shall come. And so the truth is where my peace is. Woo! See? Very key. Ah! See? Point number one, point number two. It's a greater level of truth being revealed. So you can't get me on what I experienced. You can't get me on what you said. You can't get me on, on what you think is not coming or what is coming because I live in the is. I live in the is. I live in the isness. When you have a clock, you know, I wish I could show you, but when you have those digital clocks that have the numbers on them, uh, you can have a clock that says 12 o'clock midnight and have one, two, two dots and have zero, zero. That's 12 midnight, right? But as soon as it turns 12 midnight, time is still kicking. 
Now, there is a time zone that, watch this, that between 12 and 1201, there is 59, 59 something. 59 seconds. 59 seconds before it turns to 1201. I cannot tell you on the clock that it is 12.0.1 or 0.2 or 0.3. It doesn't read the seconds. There's a time zone that cannot be registered. And I'm waiting for the 59 seconds to go through. Once the 59 seconds go through, the clock turns to 1 and then I read 12.01. So now it is 1 minute after 12. But there were 60 seconds in between that could not be recorded. That's the truth. That's the time zone that we live in. That's the pivot transition of the spirit. That there are places in the spirit that God reveals to you that cannot be measured by man, cannot be understood by natural understanding. It is from the Holy Ghost, the spirit of truth that makes intercession with bones and groves that cannot be uttered. It is from that place and that Holy Ghost that's making intercession for the things that you may be feeling, but they're uncharted. You may have been through, but they're uncharted. Uh, you may have, they may have touched you, but they're uncharted. And because of that place, you stay in the truth that when the clock turned, you didn't wait for it to turn to have a brighter, a brighter day. You had a brighter day because you were living in that truth at that moment in the isness. In the isness. In the isness. Faith is equal to the isness. Woo! See? See? Isness. Watch this. Here we go. All right? Ha! Ah. Number 14, here we go. Verse 14, chapter 16 of St. John. He says, well, let's go back. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. We might not get no farther than this verse today. Watch this. Watch this. For he shall not speak of himself. The secret to your success in 2020 and really, you're there now. You don't need the clock to clock to charge again. Why? Because you walk in the truth. Okay? Watch this. Dad says space, time, and matter consist in the natural realm. Location, seasons, and people. Okay. You preaching that. <laughs> and so that's very key. Okay? But watch this. Verse 16. For he shall not speak of himself. He shall not. The secret to your success of walking in truth is to never speak of yourself. Jesus said the same thing. He says, I say nothing of my own, but only what the Father has given me. Okay? I'm giving you something very major. Good to see you, Brother John. Jesus said, I say nothing of my own. The Holy Ghost comes along and Jesus says, he will not speak of himself. How do we walk as vessels? We walk as vessels, totally submitted to God, because even though we have a will, we submit our will to him and we don't speak of ourselves. The enemy is looking for a language that gives you glory. He's hoping that you say something that gives you glory. And if he can find in your language where you are being seen, it is something that you feel, you think, then that becomes an entrance for him to bring about bondage. The key to closing all doors to the enemy and all windows to the enemy is to have nothing of yourself to say, but only what the Father wants you to say. And so we learn this secret. How did Jesus become obedient? Because he said, I, I say nothing of my own. I have nothing to offer. Everything I do is about the Father. The Holy Ghost is sent to us as a comforter, as a spirit of truth. But the Holy Ghost speaks nothing of his own, but only what he hears. So as we move into the sonship, as we move into brotherhood, we must remember that our job is to watch this, 
to be dead to our own feelings and opinions that we now are living under the word of God. It is what we live under that determines how far we go up, how far we advance. It is, it is, it is being under the word of God, under total submission to the voice of God, the leading of the Holy Spirit, to not speak of yourself. Thank you, Brother Brian. Jesus said, by myself, I cannot do nothing of my own. See, you cannot believe in your own natural strength or your own natural eyes or your own natural ears. God is moving us into what season? You have 2,000 to really understand spiritual walking, spiritual talking. We walk by faith and not by sight. Walk by the spirit, not by the flesh. Walk after the spirit. To follow the spirit. God is critiquing us. He's causing us to be to be led into the spirit of truth. Of what really, what walking in love looks like. What walking in perfection looks like. What walking in truth looks like. To have nothing of your own. That even your dreams are not your dreams. But the dreams that God gave you. Your aspirations. This removes false perceptions. The enemy has tried to... Control your mindset by media, by domestication, by association, by education. And these things have hindered who you are. You got your identity from what you wear, but not from, but not from what you carry. What's this? You have got your identity. So who told you you were naked? Uh, where are you? You have you have hid yourself. You have come up with a philosophy. Where is your gift? I hid it because I thought you was a hard taskmaster. Your your perception of God, your perception of the Bible, your perception of religion, your perception of church, your perception of of what it is to be a mother, a father, a brother, a sister. Your perception of what is love, or what is sexuality. All these things have been indoctrinated to you by the world. But when you lead on the spirit of truth. It gives you the real meaning of marriage, the real meaning of, of, of covenant relationship, the real meaning of friendship. And then watch this. You begin to not live your world because the world teaches you to live your world for yourself, to do everything for Uno, number one, for me, look out for me. But when you begin to be led by the Spirit of God, now you begin to have a greater level of truth of why you're here and why God gave you what he gave you. Why you're blessed. Why you live in a certain city. Why you live in a certain house. Why you're married to a certain man, a certain woman. You begin to understand that and now you begin to have no language that is tied to your life in the flesh. But all of your language is tied to how you live in the spirit. Woo! Your, your, your emotions are different now. Now you allowed your emotions to be tied to purpose. You allowed your intellect to be tied to purpose because you live under, what's this? Under the authority of God. Thank you, Brother Brian. You helped me out this morning. He said, I do not come about old authority. See? And so we have to give up our rights to have any rights. I give up my rights so that I can only... God has the rights. You know how when you play music on Facebook, you have to say, I don't own the rights to this music. This is the language. Was, I don't own the rights to say what I want to say, to feel what I want to feel, to go where I want to go. I only have the rights. Watch this. I give up my rights and I only exercise the rights that God has released to me. Woo! Okay. Very, 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 very key. He said he would say nothing of himself. Woo! Oh my God. For he shall not speak of himself. Where are you going? You cannot, if, if you speak of yourself, even in this new transition, you will be able to be traced. Many times you are walking in Gilgal in circles. You are walking by a cycle because you still left you traceable. You still left yourself traceable. God is moving you. And this is why a lot of things are happening in your life. A lot of people are experiencing friction, frustration, attacks. This is, watch this. 
This is the plan of God to remove every traceable offense from your life. This is why, and you may say, well, why is it so intense? Because God has... Uh, 28 days to get you to a place. 28 days to get you to a place. You are experiencing something because something is shifting mentally, physically, spiritually, shifting. And God is getting you ready now. And there are many things, many ties that are being broken now because of where you're going. Many concepts are being broken because of where you're going. Many false alignments are being broken because of where you're going. And God has been doing it, even in my own life. God started about maybe three months ago. Things begin to, and really longer than that, been peeling off. They're peeling off. I no longer believe this, no longer believe that. I accept this God. I accept who I am. I accept my new name. I accept this. All these things because of what God has commissioned, because of what today holds. I begin to see all my days in the one day. In the one day is all the days. So when God releases a day, he releases days. See? He releases days. It's like one day, when you release one day, you release 24 hours. When you release 24 hours, you release 60 minutes in every 24 hours. When you release 60 minutes, you also release 60 seconds in every minute. And you got 60, watch this. 60 seconds make one minute. 60 minutes makes one hour. 24 hours makes one day. See what I'm saying? 365 days makes one year. So when God speaks one, he speaks the value of it. So when God moves you out of a day, he moves you out of a cycle of days. God is removing the cycle out of your life. You are moving into a new day, which means you're coming out of a cycle of bondage. You're coming out of a generation of bitterness and envy. And so this is why you feel it at tense because the last residue of it is moving. Even your level of understanding, God is moving the level of how you understand. You will never be able to understand at a kindergarten level again because every time you receive a level of truth, what it does is it automatically sharpens your sword to hear at a greater level. When the spirit of truth comes, it allows your hearing to improve. So now you, how you hear your husband advances, how you hear your wife, how you hear your children advance, how you hear, right, right now, the, the spirit of truth is so heavy right now as I'm speaking. Fresh revelation, he begins to speak and you get it instantly. Things that you never knew, you talk it as if you already known it because you've already known it because it was in the ears. Ooh, that's it. Everything is in the day of the Lord. See? Everything is in the day of the Lord. But how we see it in the manifestation of the earthly realm, it becomes days, it becomes minutes. But everything is, was, and everything was, shall be. Because it's all in the oneness. It is all in the spirit of truth. And so what happens is, it teaches you how to manage your earthly realm from a spiritual mentality. You're no longer carnal in your mentality. So now you are heavenly minded on earth. And you begin to release as it is in heaven. You begin to release it on earth because of where your mind is now. In the already done. See? But how do you, how do you get there? By, by closing all doors to your own glory. Woo! See? See that? See that? To your own glory. You begin to close that. I don't speak of myself. The Holy Spirit don't speak of itself. Woo! Watch this, okay? For he shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear. You are moving to the place that you will speak what you hear. You will speak what you hear to your children when they wake up in the morning. Good morning, mama. But mama will speak what she hears. And now the language in your marriage is different because you're not speaking what you feel anymore. You're speaking what you hear. You're releasing a word for the day. You're releasing a word from the day for today. From the day of God. You speak from that day. 
You speak from that hour. You speak from that place. Woo! Okay? I heard Apostle Michael Scott say something that was very powerful. I mean, every time we talk, he just blow me away of the, the insight that he has in God. But in one of his teachings, you know, and I call him my dad, and he's a dad and a brother to me, and I love that. Uh, but he said this. He said, most people teach the three positions, death, burial, and resurrection. And he said, we, we know about the death. We have to die and then buried and then resurrection. He said that. He said, but most of us don't speak about the fourth place. He said, the fourth place is after you die and after it's been buried and after there's a resurrection. He said, we have to sit at the right hand of the Father. We sit in heavenly places. He said, most of us don't teach of how we never take the position of where we sit. And that is so key to life. And we have to understand that there is a seating place where teaching is done. We're releasing of information. When a person sits down, watch this. It shows that they are in a place of learning or growing or releasing. Now, 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 now we're already there, so I'm going to go there. Whatever, whatever you are, whatever you are learning, you are also teaching. Because in the spirit realm, there is no learning. In the heavenly place, there is no learning because when the Spirit comes upon you, you need no man to teach you anything, but the Spirit should bring everything back to your remembrance. Remembrance, watch this. Memory is in time. So you don't need to remember in the Spirit. It is the link. And what happened is the Spirit of truth is the link. It's the link between the physical world and the spiritual world. It is the link between, it is, it is, it is the, the porter, it is the realm in the spirit where I can be, watch this, in a heavenly place at the same time in an earthly situation. But because I'm still sitting in the spiritual place, it is releasing from the spiritual place to me in the physical place to apply on earth as it is. And we are moving to a place, God, I feel the Holy Ghost. By the Holy Ghost to now sit in heavenlies while you're getting groceries, while you're going through life, while you're going back to college, while you're at work, while you're preaching, while you're teaching, but you're still sitting in a place and everything that comes out of your mouth is what you heard. What you heard. So you speak something on your job, but you're speaking what you heard in the place of the heavenlies. And now, now your language is a heavenly language to an earthly place to transform the earth. Watch this. To bring kingdom. To, get, to bring kingdom. The language of the king to the earth realm. Woo! To the earth realm. And the world shall witness the earth being transformed. By the sons and daughters of God. Through what they heard. And listen. The world is going to call on the remnant. To say how do we solve sex crimes? How do we solve kidnapping? How do we solve? And we shall release a strategy. Based upon what we heard. Woo! It's heavy today. It's heavy today. Watch this. Ah, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. Are you listening to the spirit of truth? You're absolutely right, Brother Michael. Even when, you, even when you're in trouble, you still have a place. So we already are here now, so let me tell you the truth. Trouble, problems, all these things are not real. The earth realm is a lie to the spirit of truth. Let God be true, let every man be a liar. In the earth realm, it's a lie. Be, the reason why you think it's trouble because you're seeing it from a natural point of view. In the spiritual point of view, it can never be trouble. It's already done. It's already complete. Your job is to walk from a renewed mindset in the earth. And, and, and release the truth, the truth to the place. This is why, when we, why is it necessary to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover? They shall recover. They shall recover. What if they were born blind? They were 
shall recover. Because there is no blindness in the heavenly. There is no sickness in the heavenly. There is no diseases in the heavenly. There is no cancer in the heavenly. There is no bill need to be paid in the heavenlies. There is no divorce in the heavenly. There is no uh, uh, altercation in the heavenlies. My job is, is to listen to the spirit of truth and then release the truth to that situation and watch it recover. Go back to its original place in God. It's only because we believe that it's real that it stays real. When you free the mind of the captivity of the lies, the devil is a liar. He is the father of it. He's the father of it. It's the only thing that God gives him fathership of over. Lying. So there is his lie. And he lies. Watch this. He's the prince of the world. Carnality. And he uses the world, the air that we breathe, the media that we believe. Watch this. As truth. But it's not truth. And so as long as you see it as trouble, it stays trouble in your eyes. But when you change how you see things, how you see things will change. Oh, so when you see it, but the problem is, what lens are you using to identify your situation? That's it, the matrix. You believe it. You believe it's steak. You believe this, this the girl in the red dress. Uh, my daddy don't like me. My mother don't like me. Uh, the job fired me. All these things are a delusion. You are sitting in heavenly places. You have all spiritual blessings. All in high places in Christ Jesus. No weapon formed against thee shall prosper. And so these are things that go through in the captivity of our mind. But if you pull down every thought. And, and what's this? And every imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge. And bring it into captivity. See? Bring it subject to the mind of Christ. We are free and free indeed. See? So this is so important. And so the spirit of truth reveals that to us. And so now we apply heavenly mindset to a carnality. And when this light shall come, this light of the word. And the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. And everything that's made was made by him. And this word was this. When this light come, darkness cannot comprehend it. And so what happens is we take the lie out of it. We take the lie out of the story. We take the lie out of the story. We take the lie out of the story. Woo! Woo! See that? Right. Our attention to lies brings them into reality. We empower the lie. They have no power of their own. They have no authority of their own. See? Only thing that has authority is truth. Only thing that has authority is truth. Only thing that has authority is truth. <laughs> See? Very key. Very key. So what are you hearing? When, before you speak, what did you hear? Before you speak, what did you hear? And, 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 and let's even go a little deeper. Before you heard what you heard on earth, what did you already hear in the heavens? Let's even go more deeper. Before you heard on the earth, in proper English, but very proper statement, what I'm about to say. Before you heard what you heard on the earth, what did you hear already? What has you heard already? Because anything you are experiencing, you already heard the truth. Before it came. Before you was in your mother's womb. I knew you. I formed you. I shaped you. I gave you purpose. Identity. Uh, uh, Job. Let's talk about. Before you lost your children. Before before your wife got mad. Let's, let's even go deeper than that. Let's go before there was a moon. Before there was a star. Let's remember our original conversation. Job. Where were you when I created the moon and the star? That wasn't a sarcastic statement. That was a statement to wake up his memory because he had put his mind in time. 
And because he put his mind in time, God had to send a word to get him out of time to bring him back into eternity so he can remember before this happened, you saw it. You knew it. Woo! Before it happened. This is why we don't have to react because we have the spirit of truth that guides us into the reality of the spirit. <laughs> mm -hmm. Very key. All right. Oh, man, my time is almost up. <clears throat> but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. He will show you things to come. He will show you things to come. Point number three. God is revealing things to come that has already happened. Point number three, God is revealing things to come that is that has already happened. He's revealing things to come. How do you know things to come unless you saw them coming? If things are coming, then they had to be prepared to come. Nothing can come without preparation. And so whatever is coming, it has to be prepared and released to come. The Holy Spirit only, watch this, reveals to us what God has told him. He heard what God says, the time of that storm has come. Tell the people, speak to the body about what I have allowed to come. See, things to come. So when we are tied to the spirit of truth, we don't fear about what the world is going to be in 2020. There's not going to be a water shortage. There's not going to be this. I already know things to come. And guess what? I don't rebuke them when I know that they are a part of God's plan. Good to see you, Pastor David. I know that there's a, they are part of God's plan. I know this. I know that they're a part of God's plan. I don't have to rebuke what's a part of, 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 of the prophecy fulfilling itself because God already revealed to me through the Spirit what's coming. Not only did he reveal to me what's coming in, as far as, as of events, but what's coming to my life. Now, can we talk? Let's let's we already out there. Anything that knocks on your door, if you was in tune with the spirit of truth, you already sensed it. You already sensed it because you can never get caught off guard from a eternity place. Eternity suspends you to see from a upper position. When you are in the eternal place, you see the past, the present, and the future all at the same time. It's like being in the plane. When you are in the plane, it's hard to see streets. When you are, when you are in a plane, you'll hear the pilot says, we're passing over the city of Chicago. When you're in a car, you say we're going down 4th Street or 5th Street. Because your vision, watch this, is, is at this way. You see this way. When you are elevated, you see this way. You see this way. If, 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 if an ant is crawling on your floor, you can see where the ant was where the ant is and where the ant could be all at the same time because you are in an elevated situation. God is elevating you to be able to see so the Holy Ghost shows you things to come. You see it so you're not caught off guard. You're not panicking. You're not, watch this, you're not moved out of the spirit into a carnality because you've seen carnality come and now you already know how to respond to carnality. You were prepared for this attack. You was prepared for this uh, offense. You was prepared for what this uh, was about to come. Right? Right. Vision is expanded in elevation. That's right, Dad. And so when you are elevated, you see at a brighter level. You see at a farther level. Woo! And so the Holy Ghost, it elevates you. It elevates you because it only agrees with the word. And when you are in agreement with the word, when you walk with the word, you are being elevated. Every time you say yes, there is an elevation. For every yes, you will see 
father. For every yes, you will see father. This is why the devil fights you on finally saying yes. Because if you say yes, you're going to have access to see things you couldn't see at a no. Woo! See? Automatically. Whether that father is up or whether that father is in front, you will be able to see. Father, because of the elevation, the elevation, the elevation. If I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. The drawing power comes through the lifting power. When we praise, we raise. When we praise, we raise. See? It's the elevation. The enemy hates you to see things from an elevated point of view because now he can't get you to act carnal because you already saw that coming. Mm -hmm. How many times have the Holy Spirit spoke to you? The truth said, don't do it. Don't say it. Don't go. Stay home. Uh, go. Don't stay home. But we didn't listen to it. And because you didn't listen to it, something that happened to you that you was not ready for. But if you would have elevated by submission, you would have saw what was coming. Woo! Things, things, things to come. All right. My time is almost up. So point number one, you got to have the spirit of truth. Point, point number two, a greater level of truth is being revealed. Be prepared for this greater level of truth about yourself, about your reality, about your perceptions. God is going to reveal. He's going to take the covers off your eyes. Point number three, to reveal the things to come. There are, there are greater things that are coming that you will know they're coming. Be prepared for them coming and be, watch this, and be in position for what is coming. You'll be prepared and be in position. Okay? All right. Uh, part number, we had verse number 14, John 16. I'm going to stop. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive the man and shall show it unto you. He shall glorify me. You are living a life now, and I'll stop at this point. Point number four, honoring God is above all. Honoring God is above all. In this place that we are walking into, and really when you walk into something, you're walking out of something at the same time. Honoring God is above all. Many people may not understand you. Because you have entered into a place that honoring God is above all. Honoring God in your diet, honoring God in your design, honoring God in your development is above all. Honoring God in your diet, honoring God in your design, and honoring God in your development is above all. You are living a, a, a sanctified, committed life to God. Honoring God. One of the, I think the last test for me in my life was God asking me, if you lose all to serve me, are you willing to accept that loss with joy? When I had no attachments to anything or anybody above God. Many of you, this test that you are experiencing right now it's the last test so that you can go fully for God. There's a time in your life that God tests your attachments to the earth. How attached are you to the earth? How attached are you to family? Jesus went through this test when he was preaching. And his mother showed up. And they interrupted his preaching. Watch this. They interrupted his preaching. And said, your mother's here. He said, who is my mother? Who is my father? Only do the will of the father. In other words, I am not attached to a earthly situation or earthly condition greater than giving God his honor. And, 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 and the thing that God wants us to do, the, the, the assignment that is given to you is to test your attachments. How much alliances do you have that are out of the will of God? Alliances and agreement that are out of the will of God. Sometimes it's family alignments, family agreement, friends agreement. And God has begun to break them. God, I'm telling you, this is something that I went through. And so God said, if I tell you not to talk to him anymore, to cut him off or to move 
or to remove the weight of how you feel about them and put me in that place. I should, I should be the one that occupies your house. That's right, sold out. When something is sold out, there's nothing on the shelf. See, and God wants it to be. And that's a test so that you can honor God. Watch this, above all. There are things that the devil will try to use to hold you back from fulfilling your purpose. There's a purpose that you're called to do that if there is attachments to it, your emotional attachment to certain people and certain things, even money, God would say, if you are broke and there's not a dime in the bank, could you trust me totally? Wherever your affection is, this is what it was with a rich young ruler. Go sell all you have. I want you to be in the kingdom. I want to use you. I want you to follow me. But I have to test where is your alignments? Where is your affection? Is it on things corruptible or is it on things above? Watch this. And so he'll test you in that area. Even when it was time for Jesus to die. Watch this. He's on the cross. Mary, his mother, who was conceived of the Holy Ghost, who carried him. She looked up and the Bible says, and she behold her son. But the Bible says he looked down and said, woman, behold thy son. He did not say mother. He said woman. She looked up and behold her son. He looked down and said mother. He was not disrespecting her. I mean woman. He was not disrespecting her as his mother. But he was saying if there are any emotional ties, I will come down off the cross. I won't die for the world. If I look at you as my mother and I have any emotional strings, it will cause me not to do my assignment when pain comes, when I'm being persecuted. I don't like being naked before you, peers before you, uh, beaten up before you. You can't recognize me. I'm at my worst in your eyes, but I must disattach from any emotional so that I can die for the world. What you're called to do, you got to be able to detach from every illusion that has been created in the storyline of time. Time is an illusion and you can be tied to what you see. And so you love your car so much, you love your job so much, you love your kids so much to the point you can't do your heavenly calling. So God will test it. And when you can say, my eyes is single, it's full of light. I don't have a touch here and a touch here that a man who loses life shall find it. Unless you hate mother, father, brother, sister, you're not worthy to be in the kingdom. It is through that attachment. And when you cross that threshold, then you can say, honor in God is above all. I remember my last test in this house and God says, you finally got it because it's a time of my life that I used to say, well, if I got to go against God for my wife, I'll do it. If I got to go against God for this, I'll do it. I used to verbalize that. My wife used to say, don't say that. And I moved to a place that if this marriage didn't work, if this city didn't work, if this ministry didn't work, honoring God will work for Robert Jenkins. It's not based upon a happy marriage or happy finances. If I lose every dime, if I don't never travel again, if I never play drums again, never write another song, I have to say, honoring God is above all. If I tell you the drum days are over, singing days is over, writing books is over, can you honor me in your being? Woo! And when I move to that point, God says, now you are a vessel. Now you will not say anything of your own. I will pour through you the fullness of who I am. I'll release God on the earth through you because you have no attachments that causes a interruption. Many times it is the, the attachment you have an entitlement to people. You feel like you owe them this, that you can't do the will of God. But you got to be able to be on the cross. You got to be able to look down and say, woman, behold your son. I'm not disrespecting you. Mama, daddy, brother, sister, husband, wife. I'm not disrespecting you. I just must obey the Lord. I've been bought with a price. I've been purchased by his blood. I don't belong to myself. I belong to him. 
Okay. That's right, Brother Clarence. The mental is ready. You got to be ready mentally. Of honoring God. Honoring God. Honoring God. Has to be above it all. Yes. Has to be above it all. God will test you like he tests Abraham. You wait 99 years to get a son. I finally give you a son. And then when you finally get it, I want to know, can you sacrifice your only? Is there something in your life that's a only and you could give it up? You could sacrifice it. There's nations in you, but you will not see the nations in you if you can't give up the only. What in your life that if you could say, if I could only get past this, if I can only sacrifice this, God is after that only. He wants to be the only thing that you see. Yes, Lord. The Mount of Transfiguration. Watch this. The Mount of Transfiguration. They saw Elijah and Moses. And Peter was going to build three tabernacles. And he said, and when he looked back, he saw Jesus only. Are you still seeing three tabernacles? Or in your life, have you moved to the single? And this is where the world tries to bring up the third eye, but it is perverted. But the real, the real singleness is God only. The real eye is on looking into Jesus, who's the author and the finisher of our faith. So, Father, we thank you right now for your anointing. We thank you for clarity. We thank you for what you're doing. We thank you, Lord, that you're teaching us today how to walk in this place with you. That you become our only the center of our joy, <clears throat> our only means for living. In you, we live and move and have our being. Oneness with you, and we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And we bless you for it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you, God bless you. Don't forget tonight, in my father's house, Prophet James Summers at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. God has given him a mighty word tonight. So please come on tonight. As many as possible, meet me in my father's house tonight. And let's hear what the Lord is saying through this prophet. And let's hear what God is saying. Powerful word tonight. So let's get ready for that as well. And then we'll see you tomorrow. We'll do a part six, okay? Uh, I thought I was going to move on to the next Bible verse, but we're going to pick up. We left off. Uh, we'll pick up at verse 15 if the Lord say the same, okay? St. John chapter 16. Read the whole chapter of St. John 16. We'll pick up at verse 16. Part 6 tomorrow. God bless you. Love you. Thank you. If you have not hit that share button, go ahead and hit that share button. And if we're preparing ourselves to be in that place, okay, that God can use us like number four. Like never before. You're not going to have to need a, a New Year's resolution. That's over. This is your lifestyle. Yes. This is your lifestyle. You're not waiting on another year to make things better. Things are already better. You're going to manifest as it is in heaven. Let it be on earth. As it is in heaven. That's how we live. We live in the spirit. Okay? So God bless you. And uh, we'll see you. Don't forget, Sister Nick Journey will be on at 7.30. Let's join with her today. Let's support her. Let's be behind her and see what God has to say through her. And always keep us in prayer. Pray for us. Cover us. All the ministries. Brother Robert Bailey, Sister Tia Crockett, uh, Prophet James Summers and his wife Michelle Summers. All the best. Sister Arthur, Charmaine Arthur. All the ministries that's tied to this. Pastor D out of Akron, Ohio, Millennium Baptist Church. All the ministries. Pastor Harrison, Pastor Jeff. There's so many ministries. My uh, Father, Apostle uh, Michael Scott, let's pray for all the ministries that are tied to this. And so we're one body, one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. I love you. God bless you. And I'll see you at 730 today with Sister Nick Journey and tonight at 5 o'clock. Love you. God bless you. Walk in God's favor.